With all of these new theories coming out in the mainstream science. String theory takes you before the Big Bang. Showing us that reality is a lot more mysterious than we have once previously thought. And what does string theory say? It says that there is a multiverse of universes. So if reality is not what we think it is, what is it? So you're saying as you dig deeper, you find computer code writ in the fabric of the cosmos. Into the equations that we want to use to describe the cosmos, yes. Computer code. Computer code, strings of bits of ones and zeros. It's not just sort of resembles computer code, you're saying it is computer code. It's not even just is computer code, it's a special kind of computer code that was invented by a scientist named Claude Shannon in the 1940s. That's what we find very, very deeply inside the equations that occur in string theory. And so I'm left with the puzzle of trying to figure out whether I live in the matrix, whether I live in the matrix or not. <laughs> Hey guys, my name is Dakota and this is my YouTube channel. I can't stop thinking about this. This is a topic that I feel like most of us have probably at least explored at one point or another in our life and it's been on my mind really heavy for the past week so I figured pff, I'm just gonna make a video about it and just let's, let's see what happens. So this is that video. Let's see what happens. If we were living in a simulation, how would we figure it out? What would the simulation look like and how would we measure it? For example, we can find the Fibonacci sequence, the golden ratio, God's fingerprint scattered throughout nature as a primary for creation. So what is it saying if when we get to the foundation of everything, the basis of reality, the essence, if when we get to the essence we find nothing more than mathematical equations or, or an underlying code to reality, not unlike that of a simulation. Conway's Game of Life is a game that shows how complexity happens over time. It starts with single cells and four governing laws. You can create very complex universes using this game. So complex, in fact, that this game has recreated itself within itself. So in the same way, like Conway's Game of Life, if we could create a self-improving mechanism for AI, artificial intelligence, a sort of, a sort of mechanism a mechanism that would improve itself and become more complex with each upgrade causing what Wikipedia describes as an intelligence explosion, resulting in a powerful super intelligence that would surpass all of human intelligence. Or you know, a mechanism that works in the same way evolution works. So science tells us that the universe started from an explosion of information. They call this explosion the Big Bang. And although the Big Bang is the sort of event that would have to happen for this experience to take place, it still doesn't really make sense if you think about how something can come from nothing. As Terence McKenna says in the context of modern science, give us one free miracle and we'll explain the rest. See, the only way that we can truly rationalize this theory is that the universe is some sort of simulation and the Big Bang was the initial boot up. Billionaire tech guy Elon Musk, who is awesome on a multitude of levels for things like trying to colonize Mars. I just watched this video and read an article about him talking about the simulation theory. And he said that the idea that this experience right now is base reality is one in billions. So the idea is right, any sufficiently advanced civilization would create, could create a simulation that's like our existence. And so the theory follows that may, maybe we're in the simulation. Have you thought about this? And a lot. Are we? The strongest argument for, the, for us being in a simulation, probably being in a simulation, I think is the following. Called 40, 40 years ago, we had Pong, like two rectangles and a dot. That right. was what games were. Um, now, 40 years later, we have photorealistic 3D simulations with millions of people playing simultaneously, and it's getting better every year. And soon we'll have virtu you know, virtual reality, 
of augmented reality. Um, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, um, then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. So, so given that we're clearly on a trajectory to have games that are indistinguishable from reality, and those games could be played on any set-top box or on a PC, or seem to follow that the odds that we're in base reality is one in billions. What do you think? Well, I think it's one in billions. Okay. E either we're going to create simulations that are indistinguishable from reality, or civilization will cease to exist. Those are the two options. So if what we are experiencing is not base reality, what is it? He was talking about a merge, a singularity between machines and our brains and how it's an ever increasing reality that is manifesting itself. Where we become one with machines. A merge is the best scenario, he says. Any existence without a merge will have conflict. We enslave the AI or the AI enslaves us. These phones and internet already control us, don't they? Our entire world is now run by machines. So it's only a matter of time before humans and technology completely merge into the virtual matrix of infinite creative dimensions of existence. If we aren't already doing that as a part of some eternal cycle that's fractaling into itself, Aside from all the what-ifs, we are, on some level, experiencing a biological simulation, right? It is real. It depends on whether I look and the way I look. And now this is not just a philosophical question. We can see this in experiment. And Bohr was, was flabbergasted by this recognition that everything was, po was possibilities, probabilities flowing and gooing all over the place until an observer observes and then things come into being. This means that, that deeply enough, when you deep dive down into the nature of matter, everything we know about the, the everyday world dissolves. There are no objects anymore, there are only relationships. There's no locality anymore. We can make sense of the world only if we base the world on consciousness. Everything starts from inside and then goes outside. So you are not pulling things from outside, you are really putting things outside from inside. None of this is actually happening the way that you are perceiving it. When you look at things, light photons beam down and interact with the optic nerve, and your brain filters out all the unnecessary light and all the things that aren't relevant to your survival or to this specific experience as being a human. The external manifestation is an internal projection. Well, dreams, they feel real while we're in them, right? It's all happening within you. So who are you? Your name? Nope. Are you your hobbies? Wrong. Your body? If I go and chop off all of your limbs, you are still you. Not to mention that your body is doing all of this without any of your consent. So who are you? Well, you don't actually exist because this is a computer simulation. So there's a bright side if you suck as a person. Oh, watch this video me and my friend Koi Fresco and Bach to Daniel made about revolution and how to apply it practically in your daily life. Also, if you like videos like this, click subscribe to my channel and uh, I don't know. Click subscribe and let's enjoy this simulation together. Hare Krishna.